Evening, everyone. Welcome to The Next Revolution. I'm Steve Hilton, and this is the home of positive populism, pro-worker, pro-family, pro-community, and especially pro-America. Last week, we laid out the origins of wokeism, the hateful, intolerant ideology that's captured the most powerful institutions in America. With its cruel cancel culture, it's as divisive and poisonous as McCarthyism, but much more dangerous, because it's not just a deranged obsession of here-today, gone-tomorrow politicians, or some fad that exploded after the death of George Floyd. Wokeism is the culmination of a campaign that began at Frankfurt University's Goethe Institute in 1923 to destroy the values and freedoms America was built on, specifically targeting faith, family, and culture, because in the eyes of the critical theorists who invented what became wokeism, faith, family, and culture were the bourgeoisie's tools of oppression. And now, here we are. Wokeism is today the biggest internal threat America faces. It is the enemy within and it's recruiting new allies all the time. The latest, corporate America. In the last few weeks, starting with the Georgia voting bill, the heads of major companies have entered the political arena as Democrat activists. They claim they're not being partisan, they're just defending our democracy and the right to vote. But when they say that, they're literally reciting Democrat talking points. There's no proposal in Georgia or anywhere else to undermine the right to vote. These CEOs are either lying or wading into America's most inflammatory issues without knowing what they're talking about. The only actual proposal that undermines democracy is the Democrats' H.R. 1, which, among other anti-American horrors, unconstitutionally nationalizes elections and pushes banana republic atrocities like ballot harvesting, which replaces one person, one vote, with one union activist, 500 votes. Unbelievably, corporate America is lining up behind this blatantly partisan power grab. Tonight, we have a message for the woke CEOs. You think you can buy off the mob with pandering press releases while business as usual continues? Oh, no. You want to behave like Democrat politicians? Fine. That's how we'll treat you. You have no idea how painful this is going to get for your companies and for you personally. Let's start with Ed Bastian, CEO of Delta Airlines. On March the 31st, he said Georgia's new voting law will make it harder for many underrepresented voters, particularly black voters, to exercise their constitutional right to elect their representatives. That is wrong, he said. No, Ed Bastian, you are wrong. Georgia's new law makes it easier to vote in Georgia and easier than in many Democrat-run states. But facts are irrelevant to Delta's CEO, who also said the entire rationale for the bill was based on a lie. No, Ed Bastian, your statement is a lie, and the proof you're a liar is provided by your own company's previous statement in support of Georgia's law. But Ed Bastian's dishonesty doesn't stop there. He took our tax money in bailout dollars meant to help employees working through the pandemic and gave it instead to managers, directors, and senior vice presidents. What a nasty piece of work. But much worse is this man, Brad Smith, president of Microsoft. His disingenuous virtue signaling statement also implies that the Georgia law undermines the right to vote. Why would he push such misinformation? because Brad Smith is one of the most cynical and corrupt operators in all of corporate America. For years, he's bought off criticism and regulation by bribing members of Congress, sorry, making donations. Microsoft has given over $20 million to Republicans to convince them that they're not part of big tech. But on the biggest issue, the one that matters most for America's future, Microsoft is worse than big tech. Every Republican member of Congress, every staffer, every conservative policymaker who's been wined and dined and financed by Brad Smith. Listen to this. China to view Windows code. China uses access to Microsoft source code to help plot cyber warfare. Microsoft just built a special version of Windows for China. On and on it goes, year after year after year. Microsoft, the ally of our biggest enemy, China. And now the ally of our most dangerous internal enemy, wokeism. Memo to every Republican lawmaker. Microsoft is China soft. If you work with Brad Smith and Microsoft, you're siding with the enemies of America. But it's not just Microsoft 
you need to cut ties with. This is Coca-Cola's utterly lamentable CEO, James Quincy. In his abject capitulation to Democrat partisans, he lined up Coca-Cola behind HR1 to rig the voting rules in the Democrats' favor. Preposterously, he says it's to protect black people's rights. But James Quincy targets black people. Black kids see more than twice as many of his ads as white kids. James Quincy increased his ad spending over 80 percent in the last few years, despite multiple studies linking his product to poor health. James Quincy encourages racism in his own company. Coca-Cola employees were told to be less white as part of their diversity training. In Europe, James Quincy's Coca-Cola cynically claims environmental plaudits while continuing to be one of the biggest polluters of our oceans. We'd take corporate America's social justice activism a bit more seriously if leeches like James Quincy cleaned their own house first. And here's another disgusting, two-faced corporate hypocrite, BlackRock's Larry Fink, chief executive of the world's largest investment firm, which is laughably trying to wokewash its sordid reality. BlackRock is concerned about efforts that could limit access to the ballot for anyone. Yeah, Larry Fink is so concerned about social justice, but apparently not concerned enough to actually do it in his own company. Just 3% of his senior leaders are black, 5% of his U U.S. workforce. Now he says he'll improve, but he co-founded BlackRock in 1988. What's he been doing all these years? Oh, look, he's been one of the biggest investors in private prisons, which disproportionately hurt black people. He's been investing in bomb manufacturers and profiting from endless war and violence, though he does want us to know how much he's in favor of gun restrictions, just not cluster bomb restrictions. How woke is that? About as woke as his personal behavior, apparently, widely described by euphemisms for bullying. Maybe all this virtue signaling is a desperate effort to save Larry Fink from a Me Too reckoning. Who knows? Maybe someone will look into it. But Larry Fink isn't the only sickening Wall Street hypocrite. Step forward the grandest and most pompous of them all, J.P. Morgan's Jamie Dimon. Voting must be accessible and equitable, he says. Interesting. A company so committed to equity had to pay a $24 million settlement to black financial advisors who accused J.P. Morgan of discrimination. Secretly recorded conversations revealed how a prospective J.P. Morgan client was essentially told he was too black to be taken on. And when they're not discriminating against people by race, they're destroying local communities and shipping jobs overseas, not just as enablers of globalism, but directly themselves. They're even bribing public officials, which cost them a quarter of a billion dollar settlement in 2016. Jamie Dimon, who presides over this stinking cesspit of corporate crimes against society, now says companies like ours have an extraordinary capability to help, not just with funding, but with developing strong public policy. Oh, fantastic. So instead of the people we elect, it'll be the corrupt ghouls of Wall Street writing our laws. A new corporate activism, they call it. Hey, Jamie Dimon, why don't you do some activism on your conscience? Why don't you, Larry Fink, James Quincy, Brad Smith, Ed Bastian, and all the rest? Because you are everything that's wrong with American capitalism. You make the rich richer, the poor poorer, you crush small business, you destroy communities, you despoil America's beauty, and yes, you disproportionately hurt black people in this country. So spare us the woke virtue signaling. It won't save you from the mob, but now you've joined the Democrats, you can be sure the GOP won't save you from them either. When they raise your taxes, you're on your own. When they crush you, with regulations, you're on your own. When they break you up and beat you down, you are on your own. The new Republican Party, a multiracial, working-class coalition, now holds corporate America in contempt. So go ahead, boycott their brands, hound their CEOs, make their lives a misery. That's the next revolution we need.